Caroline Woods joining us for a look at what role Apple might play. Let's start there with a the note this morning. Caroline, as uh, shares right now are up about a, about four bucks, three and a half. Apple getting pretty close, six dollars away from the record. Yeah, shares had kind of cooled off more recently. They were down about 2% uh, this month heading into today, but uh, chipping away at some of those losses with today's move. As you said, shares up about 1.6% right now, now down less than 1% for the month. And this is after a bullish note out of Evercore. Evercore, the analyst there, added Apple to its tactical outperform list, said it's uh, bullish heading into earnings later this month. Apple reports on October 31st on Halloween. The Evercore analyst notes that Apple sent has turned more bearish in recent weeks and thinks that buy side expectations are, are likely lower than current consensus estimates. So as such, says Apple is well positioned to outperform against low expectations in the September end quarter and more importantly on the December end quarter guidance. So thinks that inline results against current estimates should help the stock move higher. Says bearish investors remain focused on the Chinese smartphone market, but we think the risk here is overstated and can be offset by growth in developing markets and a strong upgrade cycle in the U.S. where our survey work points to strong upgrade demand driven in part by AI. Of course, those AI features actually have yet to be released. So, uh, you know, some analysts uh, say that that could drive some more momentum for iPhone 16 sales. So uh, shares up about one and a half percent right now. Should note that the majority of analysts uh, very bullish on this name, about 73 percent rated as a buy, despite the fact that it's up about 20 uh, percent year to date. And as you said, about two and a half percent away from the highs. All right, Apple uh, really moving 231 bucks, responding to a note, pretty strong conviction. Seems like still a uh, really big piece of the puzzle. It's got to fall into place between now and the end of the year. Maybe it's a post-election thing that's going to uh, give us some focus, uh, given that the holiday season will really kick in the last two months. Uh, Apple's got a lot to live up to now, as the bulls are certainly, uh, it seems, reinvigorating some of the investors here. Yeah, I think that's the hope, right? I mean, there has been some, uh, I would say, more downbeat uh, analyst coverage in terms of what the initial iPhone 16 sales are looking like. But we know that, uh, as I said, the, the AI features, Apple intelligence features haven't actually been released yet. And of course, uh, the holiday shopping season is key for those iPhone upgrades. So the bulls maintain that uh, it's not even just that people will want to upgrade because of the new features. It's that they'll need to upgrade because several or you know millions haven't actually upgraded in the past few cycles so that should drive momentum for the iphone 16 but it seems like the news that we've heard in terms of the initial sales has been pretty mixed so it'll be interesting to see how this plays out not just obviously when apple reports at the end of this month but as they start to talk about uh you know kind of outlook for the rest of the year all right yeah gonna be a big one and we gotta see uh, who's gonna come buy these phones still to me seems like something that's uh, gotta really live up to expectations the other product to unveil, uh, you know, from Tesla last week that had a lot of drama around it, didn't go so well. Obviously, Apple's got a lot more reliable of a track record uh, in terms of kind of the staple-like nature of phone refresh cycles. But I still want to see if people are going to come out and shell out uh, cash for the new phone. Let's talk. Uh, uh, well, some of yeah. who uh, discovered that their, their, the back of their phone is completely shattered there you uh, go. might have to upgrade sooner You're than new. expected. Uh, didn't realize that, but that was a fun surprise to see. <laughs> Woods is due. Uh, get, that, get that fresh one into the holiday. Uh, all right, we got two negative notes this morning, though. One on Caterpillar, another one on Flutter. Uh, let's talk Caterpillar first. Uh, just a note here from Morgan Stanley. It doesn't, I mean, down 3.5%, but the stock was just put in highs over the last two weeks. Uh, so what are they saying here? And the, and the year-to-date performance is partially why Caterpillar uh, was downgraded over at Morgan Stanley. Shares are under pressure today, down about 3.5% after this downgrade, because Morgan Stanley is all-out bearish now, downgrading shares to underweight from equal weight with a price target of $332. That's down from $349. So Caterpillar closed Friday at 402 So this represents about 17% downside. But uh, shares, of course, down, as I said, about 3.5% right now. Morgan Stanley sees mounting risks of destocking and limited offsets from mega projects and manufacturing, says when combined with the stock's year-to-date performance and a mid-cycle multiple on peak earnings, 
uh, Caterpillar faces rising earnings revision risk. So Caterpillar reports earnings on October 29th. Uh, I will say, though, that J.P. Morgan went the other way. Obviously, the, the year-to-date performance share is still up about 31 uh, percent year-to-date, um, despite today's decline. So obviously implies strong earnings. So J.P. Morgan actually raised their price target on Caterpillar stock to $500 from 435 kept a buy rating, and said, we remain long cat because a major profit margin reset. The bears are penciling in. Looks increasingly unlikely adding Caterpillar has exposure to several themes to keep bulls engaged. Those include U.S. infrastructure growth, backup power generation, demand for data centers, prime power generation, opportunity for its turbines, and a rebound in Chinese economic growth. So, uh, you know, kind of seeing the uh, as Caterpillar stock uh, c- continues to rise, obviously outside of today, uh, see these analysts kind of going in opposite directions here. Analysts pretty split on this one. The uh, the Morgan Stanley analysts very much in the minority. But if you take a look, nine buys, 13 13 holds and then four sells with a median price target of 336, which is significantly lower than where Caterpillar is currently trading at around 388 right now. So, uh, you know, shares definitely under pressure, but it's had a, a pretty great uh, year to date performance. We'll report uh, at the end of this month. So we'll see uh, which analyst uh, is right here. Uh, China stock's down another 2% too. Caterpillar's got some important connections there. Definitely kind of one to keep an eye on uh, as it had a really good year, but maybe some of the potential being called into question here ahead of the earnings. Uh, so, you know, not exactly like the biggest uh, cut to their price target, but still one that's pretty deep below where it trades. So it's a pretty bearish note. Uh, let's talk some gambling. Uh, kind of a shakeup at the end of last week, possible taxes for sports gambling in the UK. Analysts are trying to wrap their head around it. Uh, there's an upgrade at Wells Fargo. A bunch of notes out over the last couple of days. So uh, the bounce back this morning of 4% for Flutter seems like maybe some cooler heads are prevailing. Uh, people still going to play even if they're taxed a little bit more? It seems like many analysts think that it was an overreaction on Friday, of course, too, amid speculation of increased taxes on uh, online gambling in the the U.K. Shares uh, were down about 7.5% this month heading into trading today, but we're seeing a nice pop, as you said, uh, up about 4% today. Uh, Quite a bit of bullish analyst activity today. Wells Fargo, as you mentioned, upgraded Flutter Entertainment to overweight from equal weight with a price target of 295, up from 224. Uh, so that implies about 34% upside from Friday's close, so about 30% upside from here. Saying Friday's sell-off reflects a near-worst-case UK tax scenario and minimal offset. So they have confidence that FanDuel will increase structural hold to 15% in fiscal 2027. Thinks that one could arrive at Flutter's targeted fiscal 2027 revenue targets on fairly conservative assumptions. Meanwhile, B of A reinstated coverage of Flutter Entertainment with a buy rating and a $300 price target. That's a street high. Also added the stock to B of A's Europe One list of top ideas. B of A says that 35% up, the upside potential from that price target is premised on FanDuel's unique positioning and vigorous market backdrop, which leads it to put estimates 18% ahead of 2027 consensus. B of A also cites large value creative opportunities, with Brazil being the last example of what it calls misplaced growth potential. And then Benchmark reiterated a buy rating uh, in a $265 price target on Flutter shares, saying it looks at the decline as an ideal opportunity to capitalize on the pullback, given its expectations for a far less severe outcome than feared. Benchmark actually met with the CEO and the IR director recently, and they were very impressed with the U.S. and broader North American secular expansion opportunities and felt confident that the company will continue to lead in product innovation for years to come. So Mm. sticking with that bullish rating. We also saw JMP maintain a market perform rating, but raised its price target to 287, so significantly higher than where it's currently trading now. Moffitt. Uh, Nathanson raised to 275 with a buy rating, and then Susquehanna uh, raised to 273 with a positive rating. So quite a bit of bullish analyst activity for Flutter today, and shares in response are up about 4% right now. Seems like kind of no matter what headlines come, investors find a way to be positive on the sports gambling stocks uh, with the trend in their favor. On the flip side, our last mover this morning, Caroline, real quick, it seems like it's always just the opposite, finding reasons to sell. In this case, it's Boeing as they're going to make cuts in the middle of a strike. Yeah, a lot for investors to consider. Of course, there was Friday's pre-announcement that was a wider than expected loss. There were layoffs, there was plane delays, and then, of course, there's 
a bunch of analyst reactions. So uh, this, of course, uh, Boeing said that it's cutting about 10 percent of its workforce, 17,000 people, delaying the, the delivery of its 777X, which is still uncertified, by a year to 2026, and uh, basically said it will stop making commercial 767 freighters in 2027, and then forecast that wider than expected loss of uh, $9.97 a share. Uh, revenue is expected to come in at $17.8 billion. So in turn, J.P. Morgan lowered its price target on Boeing to 195 from 235. Did keep an overweight rating, says the forecast from there requires a number of assumptions with few details, and so the range of outcomes is wide. Uh, meanwhile, T.D. Cowan also maintained a buy rating, but lowered its price target to 190 from 200. Citi maintained a buy, lowered to 209 from 224. I will say Wells Fargo uh, lowered its price target on Boeing to 109 from 110, but kept an underweight rating on shares. So on the bearish side there, it said the, the surprise uh, with the pre-announcement was actually the cash component, which came in 2 to $3 billion better than it had modeled. But it says this, uh, the near-term cash pressure eases, but Wells still thinks an equity raise is needed in Q4, mm. so sticking with its bearish rating. So Boeing under pressure once again today, uh, shares down about 2.4%, now down 43% year to date. All right. Yeah, brutal. Another two and a half percent off. Uh, doesn't stop uh, the pain. Thank you very much, Caroline. Good stuff. Uh, taking us through the movers here. I always appreciate that. Getting us started for the week with some action there. Uh, Apple looking pretty good.